Hello, I'm Sophie D'Souza and welcome to my channel, Sophie Stained Glass. I'm doing a series of videos aimed at complete and absolute beginners and today I'm going to be teaching a complete and absolute beginner who has come with his design which he hopes to make into a finished panel today. So the first thing we'll do is take a look at his design. This is the design that Will sent me and I love it for its vibrancy and its movement and its colour but the problem with it is it's going to be very difficult to interpret that in glass certainly at a beginner's level. Um, what you need to know about glass is the colour is carried on the sheets of glass. You buy the the glass in the colour you're going to use. Um, when you get a bit more advanced you can do painting on glass um, but you don't have a huge choice of, of paint colours. They tend to be um, earth pigments, lots of browns, lots of blacks um, and then you have some enamels in slightly muted colours but you wouldn't be able to paint up this design with all the, the line work that's been done. Um, also when you do a design for stained glass you really need to start thinking about lead lines. I mean it is great to start with a sort of a free idea um, but then you need to think how can you work it up into a piece that is possible to make. So um, we had a little chat about this design and Will came up with another design which is more appropriate certainly for a beginner. Um, I really like this design, it flows nicely. The pieces are quite simple, um, but there there is some complexity to it. And also because it's all curves, leading it is going to be a challenge. So we will learn a lot today and hopefully you will also when you watch this video. Um, it's worth saying that these will have a break in them. This won't be one piece because the pieces of lead here um, will touch and so you won't see the fact that this isn't cut from one piece because th this is too vulnerable this section you couldn't cut it in one piece. Um, so the first thing that Will is going to do today is he's going to go over his pencil lines with a two millimeter sharpie and then we can start um, learning to cut glass. So we've got some scrap glass for Will to learn to cut on and the first thing I'm going to do is explain the anatomy of a cutter. So this is your cutter and the cutty bit, I don't know if you can see that, is this grinding wheel here and it's tungsten carbon and what it does is scores the surface of the glass which creates an area of weakness which you then exploit by snapping it. Mm -hmm. um, you need to keep the cutter perpendicular in this direction so at a right angle so it shouldn't be like that and it shouldn't be like that and that's about the angle you want so your wheels there, if you have too shallow an angle, the heel of the cutter is going to get in your way and it's just going to slide about. Um, so you need it sort of like that. You need to listen because you want to hear a nice um, sort of grinding sound as you cut. So I will demonstrate. You put your wheel at the edge firm even pressure like that I haven't done a very deep score and then thumbs and fingers either side of the cup and snap you can do a deeper score and hopefully you can see that that is it shows up a lot more than the other one did but actually that's more pressure than you need. This is 4 mil glass by the way which you need a bit of welly when you snap. So Will would you like to have a go? Sure. So, so at the edge then? Yeah. 
you might want to try a different um, hold. So you're holding it like this. Yeah. I like I like to hold it like that because of then my finger can guide it. Sure. I know that other people, like professional glass cutters, <laughs> hold it like this, but oh, it's way too late for me to learn that, no, that's good, that trick. It? So yeah. I, I do it like that. So I start there, right? Uh, you start with your wheel on the glass, as close to the edge as you can go. And it's the angle, you haven't got, it, it, the heel is making it slide. That's it, perfect. That's a very good one. I don't so, know whether it went all the way though. It just... should be fine. Now what you, perfect. Great. The, um, yeah, the way we normally break is like that. It's just considered a, a safe way to break. Possibly if you're holding it there, it you haven't got as much control when you break. It might cut you or something. Oh, you will get cut, by the way. <laughs> Don't worry about that. I've got plasters. Cool. So maybe put your finger on top. One of the things you might be finding difficult is the top does have a swivel to it. And that is because it just helps when you do curves. Now, because this is 4 mil glass, and that's quite close to the edge, yeah. it might be difficult to snap. You, so, this is what we do when that happens. We use these items, which are called grosers. And you see they've got a curved underside and a flat top. Always remember, put that one on the top. You hold it like that, and then you have more leverage. Do you want to try that? Sure. That, that's the motion. Perfect. So if you would like to do... See, there's a slight break there, can't you? Yeah, but that will get covered by the lead. Right. So if you would like to carry on doing some practice cuts... Sure. Until you, you get the feel of it. Yeah, I did almost cut myself there. Yeah. You How do I start? You, you can't go back closer. Over. Well, we say start as close to the edge as you can, but we all know that there might be a tiny bit right at the edge, and don't worry too much. Cool. So you're just too good at this. Let's make it more difficult. Okay. So what you're going to do now is you're going to attempt to follow a line. Okay. And I'm going to give it a slight undulation. Not much. All right. Because you're going to need to cut curves. So... See how you get on. Sure. Choose which side of the line you're going to follow. Because what, what we do is we have drawn our lead lines and we cut to one side of the lead line, mm -hmm. not in the middle. Mm -hmm. So shall I just go from the right as a principle? On this piece you can do that, yeah. Sure. And if I, if I, if I go from the right on this one, should I be doing the same on all of them? It, for, for our purposes of learning to cut, it won't make a difference. Okay. It, we're just trying to see if you can develop, develop the skill to follow a curve. I went in the middle of that. That's, I was that's, doing that's, well. that's not too bad, Will. That's really well, not right? too bad. Now let me show you a technique to help it sure. along, and it's tapping. So have a little look, you can see that now can't you? Yeah. Have a look to, at what happens to this grind line when I start to tap it. Did you hear this change in pitch? Okay, you didn't get long to look at it because it just did fall apart, but you can see the principle there. Yeah. 
Um, so it just starts, when you've got a big long piece of glass, you tap all the way along it and you can see the cup opening up and you can see it because the light reflects differently. Cool. Yeah, it from underneath. Yeah, give it a little. You don't know what you're doing is directly under the grind line. Now that that's not changing pitch. Try holding it. Try holding it tighter. Yeah. So that as you tap it, it doesn't move so much. That's it. Did you hear it? The change in pitch just yeah. before it broke. Yeah. Yeah. It's quite good, isn't it? It's pretty good. I'm quite impressed, Will. Not bad. Should I do that one? Yep. You do get a lot more control when you have your finger on it like that, don't you? You do. So would you recommend that I do that, or would you? Actually, or can I try it, ver that? it varies a lot with the glass you're using because this is four mil glass, which is quite tough. Yeah. It might help to open it up okay. with this. Sure. When you're using the art glass, it tends to be three mil. Yeah. And with such a shallow curve, you could normally just snap it with your fingers. Right. Okay. But it's a good skill to to learn. And is there is there a possibility that if it, if it breaks there, yeah, that could be a problem, or is or does the lead cover that all up? Uh, it it wouldn't. It would it would with a with a um. Let's hold it under the camera. With a cup this shallow, you're not really in danger of losing bits. Um, you've got a little sort of hanger on here, and what these grosers are great for is just nibbling away see it's gone right so that's what you do but um when you're cutting glass sometimes there might be something under your glass which causes your glass to shatter mm. or there might be a sort of uh imperfection in the glass and it will go off in the wrong direction but generally with a cut like this they ought to, they ought to be fine um i'm going to i'm going to make it more difficult now because you're too good Right, so right. Um, I'm just going to tell the folks at home that something you're doing intuitively is really helping your cutting skills. So when Will's cutting, he's leaning over his piece like this and he's, he's letting the, the um, energy flow from his shoulder and he's using his weight and he's moving his arm and shoulder over the piece as he cuts. If you stand quite rigidly in front of your desk and just cut with your arm moving forward, what will happen is your grinding uh, you, you know your cutter will become more shallow the further away from your body you get so try and remember to, to 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 use your whole shoulder above the piece and move over so you're keeping this angle true um, and you're you're not accidentally doing that now you've pointed that out I'm going to overthink it and then forget <laughs> what I was doing intuitively <laughs> Hmm. 
Hmm. Bit jagged there. You'll definitely need to use the um, tapping technique on this one. Right, okay. These are There's designed. There's blood there. No. There's blood. reflecting differently yeah 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 so that's really good that's a very wiggly cut and it's all been done in one piece all been done in one go not too much blood lost either <laughs> <laughs> so good job not sure if it's yours or mine <laughs> no I'm I'm intact at the moment you? that's all right I have and then what did you do you did that if, if there are pieces that, um, yeah, the way you use the grosers is, um, so the bit that you need to grind away, you put uppermost, and then with the flat side uppermost, you do that. Oh, I see. Yeah. That's what you do. Okay. You want to have another go? Yeah, sure. Oh, the way up. The way to remember it is the screw uppermost. Cool. There we are. Okay. No, I can't get it. Hang on, let me come from the other side. Sure. Ooh. That's better. Yeah. Yep. Mm. Ah. Hopefully that'll be alright. This bit that I get. But you're doing the right thing in that you're moving your whole body this way and that. Yeah. And that's really the only way to do it without... Um, putting your cutter at, at the wrong angle so you, you're just intuitively doing the right thing there now I did make you stop halfway through so so I could move the camera so it might have affected your, your cut yeah that should be fine Ooh. So you're you're pulling apart at the same time as, and if it doesn't come, tap again. There'll be some part of it. If you look if you look down the line, yeah. there'll be some part that hasn't opened up, and the light, the way the light shines through it, should tell you which part that is. Yeah. I think it's somewhere in the middle. Just, actually. Uh, yeah. That sounds that sounds good, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, easy. Hey, that's a really good job. Yeah, that's a it's really a bit, good job. But it's a bit. Yes, Jaggedy there, isn't to it? be honest, uh, that will happen. Yeah. And it's under the lead, and so that's all good. Sure. Brilliant. Cool. Great job. Okay.